All right, so back on the Lodestar again today. I know this has been lots and lots of videos, but we are making some progress. So anyway, I'm gonna weld up the frame. When I say weld up, I'm gonna stick it together so it don't fall apart. So I've got it, I raised the frame up a little bit off these blocks. So the frame isn't level anymore. It's kind of running downhill, but it's, you know, crossways it's it's the frame rows are parallel so um then i clamped my level on to the back the rear section and i got it even with this front frame section and dropped the distance i wanted so raised it up a couple of inches to hopefully get it a, just a tiny tiny bit of rake um whenever say with the airbags are aired up but when we let the air out of the airbags hopefully it sits fairly level and uh Looks, looks pretty good sitting in part. So uh, anyway, I'll, I'll pull you in here a little closer and show you kind of what I'm talking about here. And um, we're going to get this prepped to kind of put a couple of beads of weld on to just hold it together so I can move it around and get a little closer to the building. So I had to uh, get creative with my cord for the welder to be able to get my leads to reach. So we got that ready. We'll put some, uh, some MIG wire into the frame here and uh, see what happens. So let's do it. So here's what I mean when I say I got creative with my wire running here for the welder. I just drilled a hole in the wall and uh, gives me enough slack to get my leads over here. So got this clamped together. These are good and flush, good and parallel. And uh, there's just over a three inch drop from this rear section to the front here. And it's parallel. I know you probably can't tell it on camera, but that level gives me something to measure off of to make sure it's parallel. And um, I'm going to get this ready to weld. I know this is not the best joint for frame repair or dropping or extending, whatever the heck's going on. But this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna weld this up good solid through here and then cut me some angled sections out of the frame here and kind of put some diagonal braces in with the frame and then I'll cut a piece of the uh, double frame here kind of go over top of it now is this good to haul with or tow with probably not but I believe it'll be plenty strong enough to drive around so it's basically all we're going for so yeah let's get this stuck together and um, just so I can move the truck. And we'll probably pull it over here a little more in the level and take a look at it after we get it stuck together. And then uh, then I'll parallel, you know, get it all leveled back up again and wet it all up real good. But right now I wanna get it stuck together where we can uh, move it and get over here close because looks like some rain's coming on us and uh, I don't wanna be out here with my MIG in the rain. So bad enough it's uh, a little bit of wind every now and then. But anyway, let's get her stuck together. Okay, so got a little tack on this. Um, actually, this frame rail is only a quarter of an inch thick, so it actually got really good penetration with the MIG. Um, I know my sloppy welds here, but oh well. We'll grind that off, it'll look good. So I'm going to move to the other side, get it all matching this side, make sure all my measurements are good, and then we'll tack that one together good too. So. Once we do that, we'll go to the inside, clean the frame rail up on the inside, weld it on the inside as well. And then, uh, then we'll be able to move the truck around. It should be okay. But we'll cut us some braces and get all this. You know, I really want this strong, but I don't want to go overboard with engineering this. So I think this will be okay for just driving around. You know, it's only quarter inch plate, you know, this frame is. So it ain't super strong to begin with. So anyway, let's, uh, let's get at it.
so there she is glued together. The rain's already setting in on me. So not the best welds, not the worst. I think it'll hold, but um, just according to what kind of time I get here in a little while to work on this thing or in the next few weeks to work on this thing, um, I think what I'll do is I'll cut some triangle sections out of this frame rail that, you know, extra excess pieces I got kind of match this, same down here, and uh, weld those in. I'll cut this um, double frame section to kind of cover it over and match it, weld it all up. And I think it'll be strong enough. I mean, yeah, it would have been nice to kind of Z cut it or kind of angle it, which I could still probably cut a little section of angled frame rail to go in there, but uh, we'll see what this does for right now, kind of holding it together. So I checked the pinion angle and they're really close to being exactly the same. Um, and I think that's what you want is kind of the angles to, to match. So I think when I air the bags up, it's gonna change this pinion angle because it kind of levers off of this front piece here. So when that, when I air the bags up, uh, I think it'll basically match. So it's really, really close just the way it is. That's actually sitting pretty good right there. So just a little bit of iron them bags. I'll uh, kind of have just a tiny, tiny bit of rake to it. I think it'll be fine. Kind of sinking down in the hole right there, but I need to air these bags up and see if I can get them straight now. They're all mangled up. When I would start the low pro up, uh, the air would build up pressure in the tank, but it wouldn't air these bags up. So I don't know if there's something wrong with this thing. I don't know what that's actually called, but we'll try to shoot some air into it and see what it does, but I don't think it'll air up. So maybe I'll come around and pick the back of it up and, uh, straighten them bags out but yeah not too bad at least i can move it around now get it out of the way i want to put it over here kind of beside the building and uh, work on it there instead of right in front of everything so we'll shove it over there here in just a second yeah at least we're mobile now so yeah, let's get this uh, some of this mess cleaned up and uh, park this thing over here where we want it. Take another look at it.
not so bad. Straighten the bags up. Still flat, but he can raise up quite a bit. So we'll grab some measurements here real quick, see uh, how high it'll raise up, and see what it does to the pinion angles. Yeah, that gives us a lot more room in here. Let's uh, let's check the pinion angles again. So the pinion angles are really, really close. I know that's listed way up in the air, so. Uh, I may have to shim this rear differential or something. I guess that's something you can do on these. I don't really know. Um, but it's super, super close, so. I don't think it'll be much of an issue, but you know, maybe we can kind of unbolt this rear diff and kind of shim it one way or the other a couple degree. I don't know if that'll be an issue or not, but. Yeah, she's glued together now. Don't look too bad. So here's uh, where we ended up. Kind of run out of time. We we'll go back to work a few days. So I know it's not perfect, but stuck these together. So what my thinking is here, I think I've said it before, is we'll cut a section of frame, you know, this top piece like this, but kind of go at an angle here and in here. So piece this back together. Probably cut me a couple little fish plates to go on the inside of the frame. Then I'll cut a section of this outer skin for this double frame to cover it all. And then I'll bolt it through, through that fish plate. But I'll weld all of it up as well. But give me a couple bolts, you know. Kind of hold it together a little bit better. So like I said, the pinion angle is a little bit off. It's not much, it's just a little bit, but that's something I do want to correct, you know. I don't want to just cobble this all together. I know it kind of looks that way, but I don't really want to be too bad. But anyway, that's the plan there. So um, this week I'll weld this in, get this all fixed up. Like I say, probably cut the plates out. Then we'll start looking at what I can do about this uh, pinion angle, get that corrected. May even pull the steering box off of the low pro and see if we can't get that adapted onto this thing. Well, we can hook the steering wheel back up and be able to turn the wheels. Um, once that's on and uh, get the drive line in, we can actually move this thing around, start working on the brakes then. But I do want to address this air. Uh, 
like I said, it has to be something in this little valve. I don't know a lot about this, but I'm sure it's pretty simple in there. But I want to fix that. That way it's, um, we can air it up and uh, kind of figure out our ride height. So that'll be coming up. <laughs> Bit one of my shots here. Oh well. Yeah. Then I might start trying to look at getting the bed fixed back on this thing. I don't know if I want to put the flat bed on or if I want to leave it. I, it just don't do a lot for me. Now, once I put this in here and kind of angle this, it might look a little bit better, but I mean, I think it looks okay. It's just, I don't think I want to just drive it around like this, but I don't know. What do you think? Leave it like this, flat bed, tool bed. I kind of want the tool bed. I can't, I can't make up my mind. I mean, I got the flatbed laying there. I would have to do some modification to it, but we could always throw it back on. I don't know. I kind of like these wheels a lot better than this one over here. I just don't really like the looks of this one. All I have is five, or five of the ones with the holes like that. These were the ones off of the um low pro where it was a u-haul i guess these these are the wheels they had on them this was a spare or something somebody threw on there i guess so i don't know what happened to the matching wheel that has all these this style holes in it but if anybody knows where to grab one of them let me know i'd like to grab one or two of those pretty close because like i said i like the looks of those better if not i'll just take that one and put on the inners back here on the back and flip one of these out but yeah next thing is cut these plates like i say tie all this together make sure this is pretty good and strong then we'll start addressing the pinion angle once we get that situated we can start working to get us a drive line cut and fitted and then i don't know may, like i say may do the steering box at some point in there if i don't have time or if i don't have the stuff yet to do the pinion angle or uh, the drive line that way we can at least turn the wheel and uh yeah coming together so i know this was a quick little video and don't show a lot but we did get it stuck together and got it moved so now i can clean up my mess and yeah we can get this tied together and hopefully it's okay so anyway let's uh let's get out here and get on something else